as part of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community UK centenary celebrations. An historic conference was held to promote respect and to restore the rightful contribution religion has to offer the 21st century. International faith leaders addressed a specially invited audience of 500 delegates from the worlds of faith, politics, government, and diplomatic corps from the world over at Guildhall in London. Special messages were delivered on behalf of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Mr. David Cameron, the President of Ghana, Mr. John Dramani Mahama, and the former President of Ghana, Mr. John Kufur. The keynote speaker was His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, the worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. In accordance with the teachings of Islam, he upholds the honour of all prophets of God and highlights the role of religion in the promotion of peace. His Holiness is a passionate advocate for universal human rights and global peace, and has also delivered keynote speeches at the British Parliament in London, Capitol Hill in the United States, and the European Parliament in Brussels on the theme of peace and justice. He has also written to and met world leaders, urging them to inculcate a true sense of justice and peace in international relations to avoid regional conflicts from engulfing the world. I can attest to the fact that the history of religion proves that the answer to all of these questions is most certainly yes. Allah the Almighty sent the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for the re reformation of the entire world and to instill these paramount objectives amongst mankind. In his efforts to reform, he preached this divine message constantly and would strive endlessly day and night. His efforts were not limited to preaching, but rather each and every night he would, be, he would bow down before his Lord in prayer, weeping with such anguish and heartache that the place where he prostrated would become submerged in tears. What was, his, it, what was it that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed for so earnestly? It was not for his personal wealth or power. It was not to, to usurp any government or administration. Rather, his every prayer was consumed by utter torment, beseeching his Lord that why people were not spiritually and morally reforming. Why did they refuse to abandon their cruelties? Why were they unwilling to forsake wrongdoing and evil? And because of all this, why were they throwing themselves into an abyss of destruction? The Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah upon him, uh, uh, agony and ex uh, anguish was so deep and his state of anxiety and despair was so great that in the Quran, Allah addressed him directly asking if he would grieve himself to death because they did not listen or heed his message. Chapter 18, verse 7. However, God Almighty is he who listened to earnest and heartfelt prayers. And so he answered those prayers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. History testifies to the fact that those very people that were ignorant and uncivilized, who were drunkard, fornicators, gamblers, thieves, and, invo and involved in all types of vices came to rid themselves of all of these evils and replace them with the most magnificent moral values. Those very people were transformed. Those very people developed an unbreakable bond with God Almighty. Never could any worldly power have brought about such a spiritual revolution. In the same way, along with the revival of the faith, which is to occur through the promised Messiah and Mahdi, this perfect standard of justice will also be established in the world. We Ahmadi Muslims are fortunate that we not only have faith 
in these prophecies, but we also have a firm belief that the person who was to be sent by God Almighty has come and the person of our community's founder, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadiyan. We further believe that the task of reviving Islam, which was begun by the Prophet Messiah, is continuing today through the institution of Khilafat, that is the system of spiritual succession. And so it is my prayer that the world comes to understand the need of the time. I hope and pray that we, who are the representatives of different faiths and religions, and who have gathered here today to particularly demonstrate these loving teachings, all strive towards worshiping the one God by teaching, uh, by treating his creation with justice and by fulfilling their due rights. Certainly, these are the original teachings of all religions. We should utilize all of our resources and capabilities to foster a better society, to help God's creation and to spread love, affection and peace at every level. The urgent and critical need of the world today is to establish peace and faith in God. If the world understood this reality, then all countries, whether large or small, would not in the name of defense, uh, defense spending allocate millions and billions of dollars to expand their military capabilities. Rather, they would spend their wealth to feed the hungry, to provide universal education, and to improve the living standards of the developing world. If we assess today's world in a fair manner, then we must accept that even the economies of the developed world have become uncertain and unstable. The spreading power, the spending power of the members of the public has vastly diminished. There is a greater desire to send armies to foreign countries thousands of miles away and to send weapons rather than paying attention to alleviating the problems on one's own doorstep and solving the problems of a nation's own people. Thus, disorder is not being spread by religion, but it is actually being spread as a result of political games and ambitions. And the fact that peoples and nations are seeking to assert their superiority over one another. Thus, it is the urgent need of the time that all people and all nations pay heed to this. Otherwise, the world stands on the brink of an unimaginable destruction. Some of the destruction we see in the world today is self-inflicted, while some is due to the horrific consequences of natural disasters. And so, in order to protect ourselves and to save mankind, we need to turn towards God Almighty, and we need to attach ourselves to the living God, and uh, living God who did not forsake the prophet Moses and his people, and nor did he forsake the prophet Jesus and his disciples, nor have true Muslims been de uh, deprived from attaining the blessings of God and seeing their prayers accepted. These are not old stories or myths of the past, but in fact, God is an ever-living God who is alive today. At the end, I would like to say that instead of laying the blame for our mistakes upon God and upon our uh, religions, we should take a look in the mirror and assess our own shortcomings. With these words, I would like to once again thank all of the guests for taking the time to come and listen to what I have said today. Thank you very much. At the end of the forum function, we normally offer silent prayers. So now I will offer silent prayer. Ahmed will join me. 
All of you can pray in your own way if you wish. Now silent prayer. I thought it was fantastic. The idea that so many different religions can come together um, under one roof to discuss how we can enhance um, the faith and how we can get people to live together as one, get rid of all the, the, um, the problems in the world. I think as His Holiness said, um, the core truths of, um, of all the major religious faiths are universal love and tolerance and peace and I think actually there is so much in the media that would um, seek to portray religious people as um, at odds with one another when in fact I think as we see here tonight the reality is very different. The Caliph's very important message at the end that we should join hands and work together for peace and I think that is what the world needs today so that was why I come and I hope to bring it back to Norway and to the Ahmadiyya uh, movement in uh, Oslo, where I'm living, who is very important for this also in Norway. The message of the Khalifa was a message of peace, understanding, message that all the religions of the world have to speak to each other. We are all the descendants of Adam that was created by God, and therefore we are all brothers. And as brothers and cousins, we have to treat each other in such a way of understanding and peace, not to confront each other, not to have fight in the world, but to try to do as much as we can to work and pursue uh, peace.